we are back at it again today with a new project so this isn't mine's this is my boy's drift car neil i'll put his instagram up on the screen here this car is amazing i actually like it it's pretty nice so this just like i said is a drift car and we are going to help it pass tech inspection there are a couple things we need to do to make sure this thing passes but not not too much you can see full roll cage interior is still somewhat intact we're gonna fix some of that and um yeah we're gonna basically add a few couple key things to this car to actually make it perform much much better we have a bunch of parts and um yeah i honestly can't wait to get started so if you guys know just taking a little break from the porsche right now because i'm tired of trying to fix this damn gas tank e85 does not like just ugh, gosh you just cannot fix anything because e85 eats through every single thing that i try to fix it with so we're gonna wait for more parts for that so we can get that driving but today we're gonna have a little fun with this this thing does run and drive fully stock vq not really much done to that we're gonna have to fix that too and we're gonna do a little bit of cleaning in the bay as well so this might be like a full restoration video we gotta do a couple of things but not too shabby so let's go ahead and just get started got a bunch of parts like this hydro this is one of the things we're going to be doing today you can see we're going to have to custom make a bracket so that this thing sits kind of in like an OEM location on the on in the center console area so all right so since this is a used kit already off rip I gotta start finding parts to piece this thing together with very weird very weird but if I get it it's all right he came to the right garage so let's go ahead and rig something up all right got you guys up on the head cam here hope you guys can see what i'm doing so i had to do a little makeshift clevis here something that i had laying around just gonna drop a bolt through this damn thing and uh get this thing mocked up in the car i'm gonna fix it later seems like i could jam an m12 in there that's not too bad cool use so we're missing parts but we'll make it work i can fix that look at that fit in it though jesus crazy all right uh, get in this bolted oh wait oh nice it's a drift car with amenities look at that so we're going to mount this thing here you see this thing is like reverse mounted so this is not too bad i don't think I'm gonna have to pop this off and see if this will be a problem. Looking like we have some space in here. So it's looking like. Go ahead and destroy this man's entire interior here. doesn't really need much of this but I'll try and keep oh look power wires gonna have to relocate these so these interiors are real easy I don't know if it's just this car because it's a drift car but it's nice I like the factory gauges it's real cool all right so we somewhat came up with an idea I know they sell kits for this but this is a budget build just like everything else in this yard. So, we're gonna go ahead, branch off of this bolt right here, and then bolt the rest in. So all I gotta do is make a little stiff bracket, this thing can mount here, and then it's gonna cut out a nice rectangle, probably in like this area here. We're gonna cut out a small one first, make it fit, and then, you know, size it up from there, but cut out that, and then this will sit nicely right under the radio, right here, angled at him so he can boop, boop. This doesn't work, so that wouldn't be in the way, so boop. 
Um, there's a little bracket up in there. I want to chop this off to get this thing to sit properly. And then we're going to uh, start to make our custom mounts here. So it's not too bad. I love this thing. This thing is cool. Ugh. All right, so we have to cut out this bracket right here. If it doesn't want to see itself out nicely, no, it doesn't look like it wants to. So we're going to cut this bracket right here. Right, so we cut out that bracket in there. Now it's actually time to get this little doohickey up and running. Um, I'm just gonna put this in place and I'll show you guys my thought process. All right, just like that, we have this e-brake mounted. I've used the um, stock bracket and modified it and rib nutted it into the car. It's kind of hard to show it up the camera, but. Yeah, I don't even know what brand this is, but that's how that's how it looks. So if you have the same brand, you could do the same thing. So we got this thing to clear. Not too bad. See, this thing sits up nicely. So now we have to drill a hole for this e-brake handle to go up. All right, with some trimming, we now have this thing to fit very, very nicely. Cool. So let's go ahead and install a bunch of things back just to make sure everything is good. And then we're gonna have to chop and bleed this thing. All right, guys, we have the e-brake done now. It's mounted nice and strong. Just gotta run lines. So as we wait for those lines to come in and the dual caliper bracket, we need that too. But once those two things come in, we're gonna finish that. So. Right now we have this thing, here comes the fun part. We're going to be changing out this stock wheel because when you're drifting, you kind of don't want an airbag to go in your face. So this is, for drifting, I would say it's a must. So let's go ahead and install this hub. And we also had this NRG quick release I had for years. You can see it kind of matches the cage. This is pretty cool. So perfect fit for his car. So let's go ahead and uh, show you guys how to take this off now. All right, first thing we have to do is take off the airbag. So we need these, I believe this is Torx, but we need the tamper-proof one, the one with the hole in it. Let's see what size this is. One more bigger. I'm getting really good at this. So it looks like we're gonna need a T40. Oh, no, I was right, T30. All right, cool, first try. So we're gonna need a T30 bit. You can see, get that in now. It's gonna loosen up one, and there should be one on the other side as well. Two, once we get those out, we'll be able to pop out the airbag, and then move on to the next step after that. Okay, so we removed our tool, TT30, not T30. Remember if I said that before, but boom. Now we have our steering wheel off. Make sure you have your battery disconnected, so. What I just gotta do is just, I believe, lift and pop. I gotta figure out how to pop these off, but it looks like you just lift the black tab in there and the rest would come off. All right, so what you wanna do is get up in here. Just get the camera to focus. What you wanna do is get in the middle of the tab and pop it up, basically. So both of them are done now. Now we have a fully disconnected Z airbag. It's gonna go right on the marketplace. So, next thing on the agenda, see the steering wheel is kind of locked. We're going to put the key in and center it. And then we're going to take this hub nut off. After that, we want to make sure it's completely centered because when we put on this hub, you can actually get it wrong and get it, you know, 15 degrees off, probably not 15 degrees, probably five degrees off left to right. So you can see on the hub, there's a little black dot right there. That is the top hole. So we want that to be completely straight when the wheels are straight. All right, you wanna make sure the wheel is nice and straight to where it springs back to the center. 
this is pretty good it's pretty good right there now let's go ahead and shoot this nut off it looks like a 17 maybe completely wrong it's a 19. boom so you can see we loosen it up a good amount now we are going to oh wow it's actually pretty easy usually you have to fight this wheel to come up that's why you see with the nut here we kind of you know stop it from all this pulling we kind of stop it from hitting us in the face that's what i would recommend but wow this thing came up really easy maybe it was kind of off before don't even know what you buy nowadays guys you really don't know what you buy nowadays so take that hub nut off you can see there's a line to see where it's completely centered at i'm trying like move it straight up try and memorize where that's at so when you put this on you want that line basically to match up with this dot right here right there all right so before you put the new hub on we're going to be installing this little connector here this is going to give us a horn i'm going to connect this directly to the clock spring right here this is a full-on kit so that's pretty cool and then after that we're just going to tuck all these wires inside this hub right here so you can see the line right there on the rack I'm going to line up that line with this dot right here get it as close to center it's never going to be dead 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 center you can see it's like a tiny bit off to the right just a tiny bit and if you rotate it just a little bit this way it's gonna be off a tiny bit to the left so there's like really no winning here so I'm just gonna do that and you can um yeah fix that with your rack so I'm gonna go ahead and tuck all these wires up in here basically everything will move with the clock spring and then we're gonna go ahead and put our hub nut back on and tighten this up don't really know the foot pounds but we're just gonna shoot it on with this op of a gun and call it a day nice and secure all right so after you get all of those nice and securely tucked in there we're gonna go ahead and throw this on this is the base of the hub right here and then we're gonna use these supplied allen bolts they gave us to tighten this on here no specific torque specs for these you can see the size of allen that they supplied which means you're not supposed to hold these down just get them nice and tight all right so now that we got these nice and tight here and go ahead and throw on our hub we don't have a steering wheel yet but this is basically how it's going to look so that's not too shabby nice and solid and everything works so great now let's move on to the next thing all right guys a couple days later here we have all of the lines that hopefully we'll need all the lines and fitting so we got a couple 90s a couple straights also we have a box of leftover parts that we didn't use for you know the 944 so we should have enough to build all of the lines out for this z all right guys back in the car here let's go ahead and make these lines yeah also we got a new steering wheel for this thing this thing's actually pretty cool pretty cool especially with the buttons and whatnot yeah it's cool all right back to business so whenever you're making brake lines such as a 3an ptfe line you're going to have three pieces to the fitting you can see we have the 90 here the screw on bit and then this is i believe it's called like a collard or something so you can see this line isn't just no annual line this is a ptfe 3an brake line so all ptfe lines they need ptfe fittings and then that basically comes with this little silver thing right here so what we're going to do is we're going to spread them out trying not to hurt yourself guys but get a little tool spread out the stainless steel bit of this line to shove this all the way down onto here and then we're going to be able to basically screw these together and sandwich this in between so first thing you do which is really like the easiest thing to do get this over there like so 
make sure that's on there because after that, after you once put this on, it's not gonna be hard to, it's not gonna be easy to get that piece on there. So we're just going to kind of spread this out a little bit. I like to somewhat, sometimes use like a needle nose just to get it to spread out a bit so it's easier. All right, so now once we did that, you can see we have the collet and we're just gonna shove this on here basically. I'm gonna shove it down as far as it can go. There's like a little lip. For some reason this one has two. See, it's, it's like a little lip on the inside of here. That's where you're scoring to push it down to. You're not looking to, you know, shove it all the way through the hole because it would never go through. Looking to get it nice and seated here. You know, what I like to do sometimes is like tap it down. If you're on a table, you can like squeeze it down. But yeah, you basically just want to get it as far down until it stops to the point where you can see the PTFE fitting through. Not too bad. Doesn't look too bad here. I would say try and twist it, but these frays are very, very sharp. So once you have that, you grab the bottom bit and you would grab this top bit, push this through like so. Make sure everything is nice and settled. And then you're going to squeeze this and screw this up just like that. In terms of how tight you want it, I usually just go until all the threads are gone and this thing is like almost bottomed out. Which you see, you're gonna see, it's gonna get tighter and tighter, so. If you're concerned about scratching your fittings, wanna keep them nice and black or whatever color you buy, you can um, buy an AN wrench, aluminum, anything really like aluminum is going to help it not scratch the surface. Still get scratches though, but you know, not really scratch the surface as much. So, to do this, spin this up here. Another thing you can do is put a little duct tape on this end or whatever end, and you could use a, a regular pliers. So we're gonna go ahead and do that since I have a bunch of duct tape here. And boom, just like that, we have a nice 3AN90 PTFE fitting on our nice PTFE 3AN stainless steel braided line. This is like a mouthful. Let's go ahead and install this. All right, guys, next day here. Forgive the noise. They're actually building two stories over there. It's interesting. So we have our lines ran yet again, and we're still waiting for our bulkhead fittings. Once we get those, we'll be able to install our second caliper. And this is a FDF race shop dual caliper bracket. I already came with it, so not too bad, not too bad. And we also installed some extended studs, didn't bother really showing that because that was pretty simple. So we're going to be running stock calipers. I'm gonna refresh these, paint them, definitely sandblast them and whatnot. But next time you see those calipers will be pretty. Those are the stock calipers, really more than enough power to lock up the rear brakes. So as you can see, we have the front bumper off and we're getting ready to install an oil cooler. So if you don't know, these motors while drifting, they don't really like to go sideways that much and stay cool. So the goal is to install this oil cooler kit here. I already opened up the box. This is one of those G plus kits. I think I'll put a link down in the description, but it comes with adapters and the oil sandwich plate. I wish it was thermostatic, but it's fine. This is like just cheap, get it done stuff. You see, we already have two ports for temps and I guess pressure, so that's not too bad. All right, so along with that, we have a nice cooler kit. So this is cool. I think this is a 25 row. Not too bad. It should keep it nice and cool. And in this box, we have a bunch of lines. I didn't get to open up this box yet. Oh, okay. These are 10 a.m. lines. I don't know if I like this yet, but they already put fittings on them. So, yeah. It's supposed to be universal, but interesting. So, we'll see. 
go ahead and get these uh, on the car now. Now installing this is gonna be very interesting because we don't have a bottom bracket here. This previous owner kind of destroyed it, I guess, or I don't know if it actually came with it, but yeah, I'm pretty sure there's something that supports the bottom of the radiator, but it's not here. So I'm gonna have to, I guess, build it off of the crash bar, which would be better because then it'll be closer to the front bumper. We might end up cutting out the grill section just to get more flow, but we'll see. So I guess we're gonna have to build brackets off the radiator, off the top of this, off the top of the crash bar. And um, I guess we'll dictate how low to hang it down so it's directly in that grill area. So I guess let's get to fabbing. All right, with some fiddling later, we see we can have this sandwich plate adapter all nice and tucked up in here above the lowest point so that's perfect you see the sway bar is the lowest point so then i also done wrap this thing up over here pass it through this little bracket that's holding up the radiator and boom so hopefully oops hard to show you guys hopefully these two straights will be able to arch enough to open up and get onto the top of the oil cooler so now it's time to mount this big hell of a oil cooler. Alright, not the prettiest holes routing I ever done but it was free and it was already made for me. So obviously there are ways I can correct this. I could easily put two 90s on these things and cut the line shorter so that they're not this tall. But you know, more effort, why? This is perfect the way it is. And tucked up and away from all of the, I guess, ground effects, you know what I mean? So free and safe from the ground. So go ahead put the bumper back on we might end up cutting the grill section but we'll see you can see it's mostly going to be in the center right where the tow hitch is so yeah we'll see if we'll cut it didn't really check this one through the base model calipers actually don't fit over these upgraded rotors he actually had those stock calipers on the car before before he upgraded to this system and thought that it would fit but it just doesn't fit the rotors are just a little bit too fat so we're either gonna buy another set of these or upgrade to the 370 setup since it's a lot easier and cheaper to get a 370 calipers than there are these calipers for some reason these calipers are like super hard to find for some reason it's so with that being said that's really it for this car honestly i guess we're gonna work on the hydro another time but uh yeah let's put this car on back on all fours and uh test this thing out but wait there's one more thing we forgot to do we forgot to give them an, a customary and systematic shift knob Let's go ahead and remove this old crusty one and install this nice new one. Nice. Right, so amazing shift knobs like these are already up on the website on systematic.co. Go get your customary shift knob now. All right, and just like that, you're back on the floor again. This Z has came in this yard and receive many, many upgrades. Now she is ready for the streets. She has upgraded coolers, hydro that we need to set up, welded diff. We also installed these new spacers with a slightly set up, different setup for tires. We're gonna change those soon. 
The only really thing left to do with this thing is give this thing an alignment and send it off to the track. So, yeah, that's about it for this video, guys. If you to stay tuned for this 944 Evo project we are working on here. Yep, so stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Never forget, never stop modifying.